Well, hello there, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Robert. I'm back again with my buddies over at Ultimate Guitar. Yeah. We are here today to bring you sweeping for non sweepers. And if you'd like tabs for this lesson, make sure you check out that link in the description. That'll take you over to their site, and you can get the tabs and all that stuff for what we're about to cover. So uh, this is a lesson based around someone who maybe uh, would want to get into sweeping but hasn't yet, and just kind of starting out with the you know the concepts of sweeping, and uh, maybe this can help you avoid some pitfalls in that stuff. And uh, you know, there's lots and lots of lessons out there, and hopefully that uh, this one will help you. So before we dive in, make sure you practice all these real slow, use a metronome, build up speed over time. I'd rather you play them slow and clean than fast and sloppy. Uh, you know, that's not really a goal. People don't really say like, man, he plays that so sloppy. Sounds so good. Okay, let's get to the actual lesson before we get all swept up in these jokes. Okay, so here's example number one. Now this is, I think, the best way to start out learning how to sweep. A little two-string arpeggio. It's kind of more like economy picking stuff, but um, it gets our hands moving in the right direction. So we're just going to go like this. <laughs> Just my pick was moving a lot in the same direction, so we kind of move on. So we start in G minor, F major, G minor again, and then F major. I picked these because they are um, four, you know, very very common arpeggio shapes, and probably the most common ones you'll run into um, as we kind of extend them into their larger three, four, five, and six string forms. So, um, like I said, there's a lot of stuff you really want to pay attention to, and uh, the first thing is don't think about speed. We want to play these very fluently. So we want each note to kind of get its own kind of spot in the arpeggio. We don't want to be just one of those people who, you know, we don't want that sound. We want a very put together set of arpeggios. And you can speed them up as you go, but um, for now, that's not our goal. We want a lot of control between our left and right hand because they really have to be in sync to do this stuff. So the first one, like I said, is G minor. We're going to play three on the B and three on the high E. And then six on the high E. So our picking is going to be down, down, and then up. But don't think of it as two individual motions. You see my pick here. We want to go down, down. It's like one motion. Okay? So what you want to do is you want to be able to roll your index finger because if you, if you just bar it, the notes ring out. And that's what I was talking about a little bit earlier about giving each note its own spot in the arpeggio. You don't want to have them bleeding into each other. So you want to go roll your finger. So it's down, down, and up. That's our first one. That's our G minor. You're going to shift up here now to the uh, F major. Now this shape is different. We're going to be playing six on the B, five on the high E, and then eight on the high E. Again, the picking remains the same, though. That's why sweep picking is so convenient. Down, down, up. Okay. I'm going to shift up to the next one, which is another G minor. Uh, again, this is another sh a kind of variation of the first shape. We're going to be playing eight on the B, six, ten on the high E. Picking, of course, is the same. Shift up one more time, we have another F major here. This one's 10 on the high E, or 10 on the B, and 8, 13 on the high E. So those are your four arpeggio shapes. Now before you uh, move on to any of these other examples, make sure you have these down. Because you notice another part that's kind of going in to play here is I'm using a lot of palm muting, so I have this part of my hand resting on the strings right here. So you can hear that, because if I did all open, you can still kind of get some, some bleed from the other notes. And we don't want that. I keep my hand pretty anchored on the strings, and you get that nice little like um, thump versus the pluck sound. So. And you just want to focus on having that one fluid motion. Now, this one's going to be tabbed out. The, what I'm going to be talking about here isn't going to be tabbed out, but once you're comfortable with that one, you want to flip it around the other way. So we, you know, what I'm talking about is you're going to go 13 to 8 on the high E, and then 10 on the B. You're just doing the same arpeggio backwards. You're starting from the highest note, working down to the lowest. Now your picking is going to change. You're going to go down, up, up. So this is going to work on our up strokes and our down. So, so lots of stuff. 
stuff you can kind of. There's just lots of solos like the Miracle Man solo by uh, Zach Wilde. You know, he does that kind of thing. But, um, so that's example number one. Alright, so on to example number two. We're going to extend uh, this little F major shape that we were doing and turn it into a three string arpeggio. Now, um, I, three string, uh, you know, kind of offers up a much bigger challenge than one might think just going, you know, from two string to three string, residing one string, but um, it drastically changes what our hand has to do. So um, the arpeggio is this. And uh, what we're doing here is we're going to be playing uh, 5 on the G, 6 on the B, 5 on the high E, and 8 on the high E. So that those right there, that's our arpeggio from before. So. Now we want to get to where we can kind of circle it like that. So I'm incorporating a couple of things here. So one thing that's important to remember here is the picking again is extremely important. We're gonna go uh, down, down, down. So up on the eight and pull off back to five. And then up on the B, which would be six. So it's five, six, five, and the eight pull off, back to six. Down, 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 up, pull off, up. Now, what I, I see happen with a lot of people is they want to go back up to the G with an up, so you would have three ups in a row. You don't want to do that. That'll actually mess up your picking through when you're cycling it. So this G uh, is, I guess it's a C note, but it's a G string, I should say. This is a down every single time. Make sure you, you lock that in your hand. So you want to go three downs and two ups in this one. Okay, now that's with that shape. And uh, that's a huge one right there for kind of getting that arpeggio down. So that's still F major. All we're doing is adding an octave of our pinky note. Let's go on to the next example. All right, so for our final example, we're going to add um, another three string arpeggio that would kind of like complete this one and turn it into a five string arpeggio. Now one thing we're gonna do is to uh, keep this a true F major arpeggio, we would have to do this big stretch. And I want to avoid that for now, because right now I just want to focusing on the technique. So instead of reaching back here to that um, C note, we are just going to come up here to the D note. So basically, instead of grabbing that fifth, we're getting a sixth. Um, and it's not a true F major, but let's not worry about that for now. So for this one, we're going to be doing this. Okay, so for this one, we're going to be going from five, hammering on to eight on the A string with a down pick. Then you go to seven on the D string with your ring finger, which is another down. Now here's an important one. You're gonna go to five on the G, which is an up. Okay, and then you're gonna go back to seven, and back to eight. Those are both ups, so it should be two downs and three ups. That's why I like this one, because now we kind of reversed it. The other one has three downs and two ups. This one has three ups and two downs. So down, down, up, up, up. And uh, I, I'm just using major shapes right now, but you can do all the same ones you wanna, I mean, you definitely wanna do this with your minor shapes. All you do is drop that major third and uh, you make it a minor third and then you have your uh, minor shape. But like I said, we're not gonna get into that one. So on to the final example. So I know, you're thinking, you're well on your way to sweeping like a madman. Well, you're right. <laughs> you are, and I'm by no means the world's best sweeper, but the, the technique in general has helped me a lot in my own playing uh, for various different reasons, not only from sweeping, but just in uh, you know understanding the flow that our right hand needs to have for these nice fluent movements through the strings. So the final one is going to be a put together five string arpeggio. So it's this one. And again, we're adding the sixth instead of going back to the fifth. So all you hardcore theory people, don't worry. I know this isn't a true F major. So what we're doing here is we're kind of combining both shapes together now. We're gonna go five hammer on eight, seven on the D, five on the G, six on the B, five on the high E, eight on the high E, pull off back to five, six on the B, five on the G, seven on the D, and eight on the A. So, 
So when you're going down the strings, everything's a down. It's down, 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 down. Now that eight is an up. That's where our transition happens. Okay, and from there on out, it's all ups. Now what's kind of cool with this shape is this right here is an F note. So this is just our root note. So you can move this shape to anywhere and then it becomes that arpeggio. So if we move it to an A note, like 12th fret on the A string, that's an A. This is now A major. Or you can move it to a G note. You have G major or C note. Oh, we're going crazy. That was a D note. We're back at E now. And one more thing real quick before we end this lesson. Um, about holding your pick, you know, a lot of people hold their pick differently. I think there's one thing that um, you can definitely have a similarity as far as using sweeping is the fact that you don't really want to like grip your pick like you're going to kill it. <laughs> you just want to have it um, lightly there because you don't want to be fighting and forcing it through the strings. You want your pick almost to kind of like bounce off the strings and kind of like have a little bit of wiggle room. That way, like I said, you don't want to be like that kind of sound. That's not what we're going for. Uh, we want a nice... You know, you just want it to flow through the strings. So like I said, don't kill it. Have a nice, you know, have a firm grip on it. You don't want your pick to go flying out of your hand. But you also don't want to be, um, you know, too tense and stuff like that. Because a lot about sweeping is being very relaxed. And that's where you get that fluidity from. All right, thank you all so much for tuning in for this video. If you like this, give it a big old thumbs up. Share it with your friends who are non-sweepers. Let's get them sweeping. And other than that, I will see you next time with my next lesson. Make sure you get those tabs over on ultimateguitar.com. Like I said, that link is down below in the description. And if you ever want to check out other videos of mine, I have tons of lessons on here, uh, lesson packs available on my website, and in-person Skype lessons. Well, that's what we're talking about. Until next time, peace out, homies, rock on. High five.